Hello and welcome to Insights Highs. Guys, at the end, we are providing two previous year questions and we are trying to explain them. And after that, four questions from those topics which are discussed are provided. And uh, you have to solve that and the answer key is provided at the last. So it is very important because, uh, you know, if you are doing the topics thoroughly and if you are not solving the questions, then it will be of less use. So please try to solve them. So let's start the first issue that is your National Means Come Merit Scholarship. Why it is in news? Because the Union Minister of, uh, for Human Resource Development updated the progress of National Means Come Merit Scholarship Scheme that is NMMSS in the written reply tabled in the Rajya Sabha during the budget session 2020. What is the aim? To award scholarships to meritorious students of economically weaker sections to reduce dropouts in class 8. It also intends to encourage students to continue the study at a secondary stage. It is a centrally sponsored scheme. Then first of all, let's find out the difference between centrally sponsored and centrally sector schemes. Guys, remember that centrally sector schemes are 100% funded by the union government and also implemented by the, uh, this union or central government machineries. And in case of this centrally sponsored schemes, these are, uh, these are those schemes where the certain percentage of the funding is borne by the state in the ratio uh, you can say 50 is to 50, 70 is to 30, 75 is to 25 or 90 is to 10 especially in northeastern states and these centrally sponsored schemes are implemented by the state government largely. So this scheme is a centrally sponsored schemes. And uh, this scholarship of uh, 6000 per annum would be given and uh, in that respect 500 per month would be given per student and is awarded to selected students every year for study in classes from class 9 to class 12th in state government, government aided and local body schools. Then uh, let's assess the performance of the scheme. National Institute of Educational Planning and, Admi and Administration says that 72.1% uh, uh, of beneficiary students would have been un unable to continue their studies without this scholarship. That does mean that this scholarship is working well and uh, it is it has been seen that those people, uh, those students who are going from class 8 to uh, higher classes, their ratio has been increased. So it is a showing better performance. The next issue is your Christina coach. Why this personality was in use? Because the NASA astronaut Christina Koch landed on the Earth on 6th February 2020 after a record stay of 328 days on International Space Station. This International Space Station is located on a low Earth orbit and it is a joint project by five space agencies. The first is your NASA that is, uh, that is located in USA and after that Roscosmos and it is a space agency of Russia and after that third is your JAXA uh, of uh, Japan, fourth is uh, European Space Agency and fifth is your Canadian Space Agency. If you consider this single space flight mission, the previous longest single space flight by any woman was 289 days by Peggy Whitson, also an American in 2017. Valery Polikov of Russia holds the combined that is for both men and women record for the longest single space flight in history that is 438 days. What is the challenges of a human space flight mission? First challenge is your gravity field. Transitioning from one gravity field to another is tricky. It affects hand eye and head eye coordination. NASA has learned that without gravity working on the human body, bones lose minerals. Even after one returns from a space mission, one could be at greater risk of osteoporosis related fractures. And this point are very very important and UPSC can ask this kind of, they can ask about uh, bone loose materials individually. So you will get confused. Then second problem is isolation. No matter how well trained one is, behavioral issues are likely to crop up. Due to isolation, an astronaut may encounter depression fatigue, sleep disorder 
and psychiatric disorder because they have to stay within a chamber only and they don't have to go outside like park playgrounds any movie theaters like that they have to stay for a long time only in a chamber can you imagine the difficulty in that this may lead to performance uh, decrements adverse health outcomes and compromise mission objectives so this point give you lots of motivation regarding upsc preparation uh, they are staying for one year and breaking world record so in upsc only you need one year of preparation one year of isolation and one year of not doing any social activities uh, in the sense not uh, be social but not that much social so that you will lose your uh, important uh, time uh, timetable so you prepare for one year upsc and it will give you a lots of laurels in your life lots of happiness lots of respect so it is very important to study the third problem the challenges for human space flight is radiation in space stations astronauts receive over 10 times the radiation than what people are subjected to on earth radiation exposure may increase the risk of cancer it can damage the central nervous system radiation can also cause nausea vomiting anorexia and fatigue then uh, next is hostile environment is a challenge these rockets are extreme engines, uh, extreme machines. These uh, need to have inhabitability factors including temperature, pressure, lightning, uh, lighting, uh, noise and quantity of space. It's essential that astronauts get the requisite food, sleep and exercise needed to stay healthy and happy. The last problem they face is your distance from Earth. An astronaut ever a, over a space flight may face a communication delay with its team on the Earth. Also, there is a possibility of equipment failures or a medical emergency. The next issue is your UCPMP that is known as Uniform Squad of Pharmaceutical Marketing Practices. Why it is in use? Because the Department of Pharmaceuticals which is under Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers has requested the pharmaceutical companies to abide by the voluntary, uh, uh, voluntary this uh, Uniform Code of Pharmaceutical Marketing Practices. Before some days it was in Hindu and uh, Bindu Sajan, a famous person wrote the article uh, like center persist with toothless pharma codes. So actually what happened uh, despite several instances of breach of this uh, voluntary uniform code of pharmaceutical marketing practices by pharma companies especially and the demand from the Indian Medical Association and doctors to make it mandatory the department of pharmaceuticals. Uh, uh, it again requested companies to abide by this rule that is UCPMP because lots of breaches were happening. So uh, let's discuss in details. Till now there have been several instances of breach by these pharma companies. In order to promote their products, pharma companies allegedly arrange accommodation in five-star hotels, local sightseeing etc. in conferences conducted by doctors. This is considered unethical marketing and promotion by the experts uh, and they have demanded implementation of a mandatory mechanism for company disclosures of payments towards doctors and professional bodies including via third parties. So that's why it was in news. And uh, uh, because uh, already you quoted about Indian Medical Association, we will discuss about that. It is the only representative national voluntary organization of doctors of a modern scientific system of medicine which looks after the interest of doctors as well as the well-being of the community at large the founding member of the uh, founding member of the world medical association uh, especially is this indian medical association and uh, ima hosted the third world conference on medical education in new delhi in 1966 then there is another alliance of doctors for ethical healthcare. It is a pan-Indian network of doctors who, is, uh, who want to raise voice from within the medical fraternity about malpractices, systematic issues and policies related to healthcare. It aims to build critical social demand to bring in universal healthcare in India. Let's discuss about the next issue that is your Mukto Shri. So this kind of thing can be asked. Why in news? Because West Bengal government rice research center has come up with a new variety of rice called Muktasri. And uh, the why, what is the speciality of this Muktasri? It can be grown in arsenic prone areas. 
इट वॉज डेवलप्ड जॉइंटली बाय राइस रिसर्च स्टेशन एट चिनसुराहा कमिंग अंडर वेस्ट बेंगल्स एग्रीकल्चरल डिपार्टमेंट एंड द नेशनल बोटानिकल रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट व्हिच इज लोकेटेड इन लखनऊ देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द आर्सेनिक एंड इट इज इट्स पेरिल्स इन आवर एनवायरनमेंट आर्सेनिक इज नेचुरली प्रेजेंट एट हाई लेवल्स इन द ग्राउंड वाटर ऑफ ए नंबर ऑफ कंट्रीज इट इज आल्सो प्रेजेंट इन रॉक्स एंड सॉइल्स आर्सन इज इज हाईली टॉक्सिक एंड इन इट्स इन ऑर्गेनिक फार्म इट हैज टू फार्म्स एक्चुअली ऑर्गेनिक एंड इन ऑर्गेनिक एंड इट इज हाईली टॉक्सिक इन इन ऑर्गेनिक फार्म व्हाट आर दोज हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स ऑफ आर्सेनिक लॉन्ग टर्म एक्सपोजर टू आर्सेनिक फ्रॉम ड्रिंकिंग वाटर एंड फूड कैन कॉज कैंसर एंड स्किन लेसियंस इट हैज ऑल्सो बीन एसोसिएटेड विथ कार्डियो वास्कुलर डिजीज एंड डायबिटीज इन यूटेरो एंड early childhood exposure has been linked to negative impacts on cognitive development and increased death in young adults then we'll find the difference between we'll find the difference between organic arsenic and inorganic arsenic atoms of arsenic bond with other elements to form molecules if carbon is one of these elements then the arsenic compound is an organic compound if there is no carbon present then arsenic compound is inorganic a simple Inorganic arsenic is known human carcinogen. It is this form of arsenic that is linked with increased risk of cancer and other health effects. Already we have mentioned that arsenic is highly toxic in its inorganic form. Let's move to the next issue that is Guru Ravi Das. Why it was in use because Saint uh, Ravi Das Jayanti was celebrated on February ninth. So see, he was very famous during Bhakti movement. Guys, from UPSC point of view, whether it be it be prelims, whether it be mains, this bhakti movement saints, mystic poets are very very important. Uh, important uh, uh, saints and poets in this bhakti movement are Ramanuja, you know, Nimbarka, Madhava, Vallabhacharya, Ramananda, Chaitanya, Kabir, Guru Nanak, Dadu Dayal, Mira Bai, Tulsi Das, Sud Das, Maluk Das, Sundar Das. Birbhan and you can say this Guru Ravi Das. So most important is Guru, Kabir Guru Nanak because uh, recently some incidents took place Guru Nanak Jayanti Kabir Jayanti and that's why they these persons also in, important including Guru Ravi Das. He was a North Indian mystic poet of Bhakti movement. While the exact year of birth is not known, it is believed that the saint was born in 1377, a uh, common era. Guru Ravi Das Jayanti is celebrated on Magh Purnima, which is the full moon day in the Hindu calendar month of Magha. The Adi Granth of Sikhs, in addition to the Panchvani, are the two of the oldest documented sources of the literary works of Guru Ravi Das. And also, uh, you know, Mira Bai, she was uh, the uh, disciple of this uh, Guru Ravi Das. Notably. he belonged to an untouchable caste and suffered a lot of atrocities as a result he is believed to be a disciple of the bhakti saint poet ramananda and a contemporary of the bhakti saint poet kabir one of his famous disciples was the saint mirabai you know the famous quotation is there payo ji maine ram ratan dhan payo that mean i have been given the richness of the lord ram's blessing so uh, she is nothing but she is mirabai and actually uh, mirabai was a famous saint poet you can say and she was famous in rajasthan region a number of compositions by mirabai continue to be sung today in india mostly as a devotional songs or you can say bhajans though nearly all of them have a philosophical connotations one of her most popular compositions uh, i already mentioned that payo ji maine ram ratan dhan payo and uh, mira's poems are lyrical padads or it is known as metric verses in rajasthani language is there and lots of it there and she was a famous devotee of lord krishna and uh, let's discuss about ravidas among ravidas moral and intellectual achievements uh, were the conception of begampura a city that knows no sorrow and a society where caste and class have uh, ceased to matter then what are the teachings of guru ravidas guru ravidas spoke against the caste divisions and spoke of removing them to promote unity in society his teachings resonated with the people 
leading to a religion being born uh, called the Ravidasya religion or Ravidasya dharam based on his teachings. He taught about the omnipresence of God and said that a human soul is a practice of God and hence Ravidas rejected the idea of people considered lower caste cannot meet God. He said in his teachings that the only way to meet God was to free the mind from the duality. Then the next issue is your Mount Akankagua. Uh, first of all, let's see the location of this Mount Akankagua. You know, this is your South America map. And here your Andes mountain range is there. And it is the largest mountain chain in your South America. And it is divided into three parts. One is your uh, Northern Andes, then Central Andes and your Southern Andes. This Mount Akangagua, you can uh, see this region and here, here two countries are there. One is Chile and another is Argentina. This Mount Akangagua lies in the southern Andes range, especially in the Mendoza province. M-E-N-D-O-Z-A. -E Mendoza province in Argentina region, not Chile. It is located in Argentina region. And this Mount Akangagua is the highest peak in South America. Let's see why it was in news because a 12 year old Mumbai student Kamya Karthikeyan has set a record of becoming the youngest in the world to summit Mount Akankagua, the highest peak in South America. Actually, uh, this uh, lots of uh, uh, peaks are there and especially most of the uh, largest peaks are there in uh, Asian region, especially in Himalayan region like Mount Everest, Gadun West in Kanchenjunga and also you can know that Lutse, Lutse uh, after that Makalu and uh, Manaslu, Nanga Parbat, uh, Annapurna etc. At 6962 meters, Mount Akankagua is the highest peak outside Asia. Please remember this. Outside Asia, uh, Mount Akankagua and inside Asia, Mount Everest. It lies in the southern Andes, the world's largest mountain range that is located along the entire west coast of South America. Mount Everest, whose height is 848 or you can say 50 meters, is the highest mountain in Asia and the world. Akankagua is the volcanic origin especially, but it is not itself in uh, an active volcano. This point is very, 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 very important. Then let's move to the next issue that is Grand Ethiopian Renesa Dam. Let's find the dam here actually. So uh, see, uh, this is your Nile River system. You can see and it is your White Nile and it is your Blue Nile. This White Nile is originated from Lake Ta Tanzania and this Blue Nile is originated from Lake Tana of Ethiopia region. And they after that they form the Nile River system and you can see this is Grand Ethiopian Renesa Dam is there. So let's discuss the issue. Why it was in news? Ethiopia is building one of the largest dams in the world. Largest dams in the world. That's why it was discussed. The Grand Ethiopian Renesa Dam on the river Nile near the Sudan border. It is Africa's biggest dam project and will have lasting impacts on the longest river Nile. Then we'll discuss about the previous questions. In a prelim 2019, a GS question like that is asked. The chairman of a public sector banks are selected by. The correct answer is your bank's board bureau. Then we will discuss about why this bank board bureau is important. Guys, in 2016, NDA government approved the proposal for setting up this bank's board bureau and it started functioning from, the, uh, from April 2016 especially. And uh, this bank board bureau uh, actually was recommended by PJ Nayak committee. This committee is very very important PJ Nayak committee and uh, this uh, Banks Board Bureau is uh, an autonomous body by government of India and is taxed to improve the government of a public sector banks and also to recommend selection of chiefs of a government owned banks and financial institutions as well to help banks to developing strategies and capital raising plans. So uh, important points 2016 it was recommended by PGNI committee and it is an autonomous body and also to recommend different things like uh, capital raising plan capital raising plans developing strategies etc these things you have to remember 
this prelim question of uh, 2019 let's discuss consider the following statements most of the india's external debt is owned by governmental entities it is a wrong statement because most of the india's external debt is owned by your commercial entities second is all of india's external debt is denominated in us dollars guys i have to say when you find these words like all totally everybody all together and this kind of extreme statements then you can think a while that something wrong is there and not always uh, 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 you should find that it is wrong but some you have to imagine that if all is there something would be there so all of india's external debt is denominated by us dollars no because other other currencies are there like yuan you can say euro uh, pound sterling etc so not all of the india's external debt is denominated by us dollar so second two of uh, two option two is wrong so in that respect option d is the correct answer so thank you guys have a nice day